Okay, Dr. Kevin Windish from Sparks Pediatric and Adolescent Medicine here. Welcome to our video series for students. Today, what we want to talk about is insulin and how it's made in the pancreas and uh, the C-reactive protein and exactly what that has to do with how we test for diseases of insulinemia, etc. <clears throat> Please remember these videos are not intended to replace visits to your doctor if you're a parent watching this. If you're a student or a parent and you'd like to see us or if you're a student and like to come work with us for a rotation, our phone number is area code 775-359-7111. Um, we're trying a new format out here, so let me know how you like this new format. So what I've drawn here in the middle of the screen is an insulin molecule. And just as soon as I'm able, so what we have drawn here is a molecule of, um, of insulin. And I'm going to see if, there we go. Okay, and so here's the amino terminal, here's the carboxyl terminal. And this is actually pre-pro-insulin as it's, as it's synthesized in the pancreas. We'll notice there are three disulfide bridges. This first disulfide bridge way over here that goes from end to end, really, we're going to just ignore it. It's just here uh, to be accurate about the disulfide bridges. These two disulfide bridges here, however, are interesting. Okay, and they fold the molecule back on itself. And remember, disulfide bridges are rather strong, permanent ways to induce a three-dimensional change in the structure of a protein. So when we look at the molecule, we have approximately 19 amino acids that are here in the area that are red, that's red. So let's see if my, whoops, my pen will work here. So there's nine, oops, I don't want that pen. I want that pen. I have 19 amino acids there. Okay, and this section that's here in red, it's responsible for um, for determining what happens to the uh, molecule. It's extremely hydrophobic, and its job is to direct the protein into the endoplasmic reticulum once it's made. Okay, we then have two other portions here in kind of blue. We have the A chain and the B chain over here, these two light blue little um, portions of the, uh, of the molecule. And I'm just having a hard time getting this to want to change to what we want. There we go. Okay, and then we have this roughly 30 amino acid segment that's in dark blue here, or vibrant blue. This is what's known as the C-peptide. Okay, so once this entire chain is synthesized um, in the cytosol, transcribed from the RNA, it then passes into... The, and it's called, at this point, it's pre-pro-insulin, okay? It passes into the um, endoplasmic reticulum. And in the endoplasmic reticulum, this red portion from here to here is cleaved off, leaving us with this portion right here, the alpha chain, the beta chain, and the C-peptide, or the A chain and the B chain and the C-peptide. This is now known as pro-insulin, 
Okay, from the endoplasmic reticulum, it goes into the Golgi bodies, and from there, it's put into secretory granules. Inside the secretory granules, there is yet another cleavage that takes place here and here. That brings us two molecules. Okay, essentially one that looks like this, with two disulfide bridges. And then one let's see if we can change color and get my brush just a little larger here. That is shaped kind of like this, the C peptide. So this is C peptide. And over here we have insulin. They're both, both of these molecules are then excreted into the blood. Okay, why do we care? What's the, the kind of the point of all of this? Well, we care because insulin has a half-life of approximately 5 to 10 minutes, depending on um, which study you're looking at and how they're defining that half-life. C-peptide has a half-life of 30 to 35 minutes. Why do we care? Well, when you're looking for diseases of hyperinsulinemia or you're looking uh, for evidence of insulin secretion. In other words, you're trying to find beta islet cell function. If you measure an insulin level because its half-life is so short, its time in the blood is pretty evanescent, you could easily miss your insulin. And, you know, so your test will be coming back as normal insulin level when, in fact, it's high or normal insulin level when in fact it's, it's or I'm sorry, low insulin level when in fact it's actually normal. The C-peptide, because it has a much longer half-life, is a much better surrogate of looking at what's going on inside that pancreas beta cell, and um, so you're less likely to miss the peaks. Consequently, in adults, when you're wanting to look for signs of insulin, or laboratory signs of insulin excess, you're going to look at the C-peptide, not the insulin, because its half-life is just too short. However, in children, and I'm a pediatrician, what we wind up looking at, if we want to do that, is the insulin. Why? You might ask, and that would be a really good question. The answer is simple. We have an established normal C-peptide levels for kids, so we don't know what a high is and what a low is, and if it changes over the age range from, you know, two weeks old to two months old to two years old to 12 years old. So we're stuck using the insulin. Now, there are some surrogates around that. We can use um, a three-hour glucose tolerance test paired with insulin levels, and that often helps, but that's a lot of uh, blood draws and is quite expensive. Um, we can also look for physical findings of insulin excess. So what are some physical findings of hyperinsulinemia? Let's see if we can clear this layer off here. Um, signs of insulin excess would include acanthosis nigricans, Okay, so that's number one. And number two would be abdominal stria or um, arm stria or stretch marks. Number three would be evidence of PCOS. Okay, so hirsutism and um, the, the facial features that are consistent with PCOS. And that's a C, not an R. Okay, so 
these physical findings are often more valuable to us than anything in a lab. Now, it's important to realize that endogenous insulin is secreted with the C-peptide. Okay? But injected insulin, because it's synthetic, it has no C-peptide. So that's another use for this test. If you think someone's surreptitiously injecting themselves or their kid with insulin, you can measure both a C-peptide level and an insulin level. Insulin level through the roof with a C-peptide level that's normal, those don't correlate. That's injected insulin. An insulin level that's through the roof with a high C-peptide, that's an insulin-secreting tumor. And, you know, a little bit different of a situation. So I hope this has helped to explain some of the tests to you, and I hope that it helps you to understand some of what I tend to do here in my own office in dealing with kids with obesity where we're worried about uh, hyperinsulinemia and, um, and uh, blood sugar issues. If we can be of, of assistance here, give us a call at our office, 359-7111. Um, we can get you in same day if you're a patient. If you are a student and would like to schedule a rotation with us, uh, we're generally happy to help and um, love to have students here. Have a good afternoon.